down. So now next, we got to have a foundation. Your dream has to have a foundation. So there's your dream. Go back one more slide. There you go. See, there's a dream without a foundation. It's just a big black blob under there. But some people, the black blob under there is all kinds of other stuff, you know. But you know what? When you put underneath the foundation, here it is. It's a foundation. There it is. Awesome. Isn't that awesome how that happens? You know, every dream to be realized needs a foundation. The first thing Joseph experienced was a waterless pit. I mean, he announces his dream and he finds himself in a waterless pit. But you know what? God will deliver you from the waterless pit. He always, he's, he's awesome at doing that. But God is awesome at bringing dreams out of nowhere, bringing dreams out of desperate situations. I mean, if you're in a really miserable spot and you're feeling like, I got a dream, but look at my circumstances, you're set up for something incredible. You just trust God because his dreams, his promises, they're yes and amen. But you got to have a foundation for your dream. A lot of people just dream, but then they build no foundation under their dream. See, Cheryl had a dream, but she built a foundation under that. She, got a, she, she said, I don't like that we're at the back of a building. You come down these steps around the corner. It's like we're doing shady drug deals all the time. I mean, this is a ministry to women. It's a godly ministry, significant ministry. It should be up front, massive profile. We should be doing this big up and center. When she got that dream, she had to announce it. She had to speak to people. She had to say, you know the funds, you know the $20,000 that we have in the bank that you think is so awesome? It's not going to realize our dream. So if it's not going to meet the need, it must be seed. So they took $20,000. I mean, they lost some board members over that. But they sowed it all into other ministries that were trying to buy buildings and do things. They, they pioneered a, a crisis pregnancy center in Jamaica. They, Jamaica never had one. They pioneered a whole new ministry in another nation. And then she came back, and it was just a few months later that they don't even know who it was. It's a, a, off an account, a Wall Street account in U.S. funds. Here's the finances to realize your dream. But, you know, there was, a lot of, there was a lot of foundation that had to be laid. There was a lot of things that had to be done for that dream to become a reality. Some people get a dream, they go, oh, I'm just sitting here. What are you sitting there for? I've got a dream. What's your dream? Oh, just dreaming. I've got a dream. You gotta, you gotta grab a hold of that dream. You gotta grab a hold of that word. You gotta put a foundation on that because God wants to build something powerful with that dream. When I first came to town in 1990, uh, I drove up Wellington all the way up to about Palm Mall and then went across and then up Adelaide because our church was on Grosvenor and just just uh, east of Adelaide. Uh, I think Abundant Life is the church we sold to the Pentecostal assemblies, but that's where we were. So I, I was new to town, didn't live in London before. So every time I drove by, there's this great big hole in the ground where now there's First London Place. But when I drive by, that hole was there. I go, that hole been there for a long time. Yeah, I kept on driving by, and it was all boarded up, and all I knew was there's something going on down there, but it's just one big hole in the ground. And it was a hole in the ground for a long, long time. And then all of a sudden, one day, I started to see something popped up. But I was really amazed to see how fast it went up. It just, every day I'd drive by, boom, 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 boom. And you know, God, I said, wow, that's pretty amazing how fast that came up, because that was a hole in the ground for a long time. And then all of a sudden, boom, it appeared. And God spoke to me and says, I'm building something really big, Carl. I'm building something really big in your life and in the community that you're pastoring. And I'm doing something really big. And we're going to have to spend a lot of time building some foundations, building some things in you, building some things in your community, building some things in the world that you're in. He says, but I tell you, once the foundation is laid, it's going to go boom, boom said it's going to be really quick. It's going to be really fast. And I think we're at that place where we're ready to pop our head up out of that hole. It's going to be fast. It's going to be really quick. God's going to do something really amazing here. But we've had to put foundations. We've had to build for that dream. And you've got a dream in your life. You might be wondering, it seems like I've been, you know, digging in this mud for a long, long time. Well, it's been purposeful. It's been good. And, you know, God will never, ever let you down. I mean, we sing that line over and over again. He's never going to let. Are we stuck? I mean, can you move on to the next line? You need to stay on that line for a while because you've got to get it deep in your spirit that he's never going to let you down. You got to get that because when you're digging in the mud, that's when you got to go, he's never going to let me down. When you're laying heavy duty, you know, uh, it's concrete and steel reinforcement bars and you're setting things up because you know what? Once it's up, once the whole thing's there, when the storm comes, it'll test your foundation. 
I mean, once you're up and you're ready to go and you're full blown, I mean, everything that will try to come against you, it will all then depend on your foundation. And if you don't celebrate your foundations, and some people want to jump up. I want to get to the superstructure. I want to get to the windows. I, I want to get to all the exciting stuff. If you don't spend the time with the foundation, the exciting stuff will not stand when the difficult season comes. The wise man built his house on the rock. You got to build it on the rock. You know, you build it on the sand, I tell you, tough times come. But, you know, if we're going to go deep, we're going to go down, you got to have a foundation. So you got to have a foundation for your dream. How many would like to talk a bit about foundations? Foundations are not sexy. Have you ever, it depends on who you are. I mean, if you got a, now my, my father-in-law was a block layer. So, you know, he'd come see a new house and he'd, I mean, first thing he'd do is check our foundation. And I'm like, man, who does that? He'd come, how do you like the house? Dad's going, well, oh, look at that. I go, what are you doing? He goes, looking at this part. That's all covered in dirt. I know, but that's the important part. Because he used to lay foundations. He used to lay cornerstones and plumb lines and establish things. You know, if you don't build it straight right from the very first stone that you lay in that foundation, you're going to have problems. But thank God that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. Thank God he's the place we start from, and he is faithful, and he is true. And when you build off that, you're going to have success and be blessed. Amen. So say we're building foundations today. Man, get excited about foundations. Foundations. Look at the foundation on that building. Whoa. Wow. You know, when are we going to see, uh, you know, what is it, home, home and Garden Television, the HGTV, you know, the Foundations Show, you know? We're going to celebrate foundations today. You don't see that very much, do you? Except you see, sometimes they buy the house they want to build on it, and then they find out, oh my goodness, we bought this house that has no foundation. And then they got to tear it up, dig it up, lay the foundation. If the bones aren't any good, you can't build anything on it, so we got to have a good foundation. Did I say that you need a good foundation? All right, good, good. Let's move on then. Thank you, Pastor. That was good. This fellow here is a, a guy named John Wooden. How many know John Wooden? You know John? He was called the, the, the Wizard of the Hard Court or the Wizard of West, Westwood down in Los Angeles. And, and he won seven NCAA basketball championships in a row. He was the head coach for a UCLA basketball team. How many heard of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? You heard of Kareem, that, that was one of his first students, one of the fellows he worked with, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But he was a, a fantastic coach. He won seven championships in a row. He won 10, I believe, in 12 years. That's unbelievable to win those many championships. No, Nobody's even came close to what he did. But uh, he did, if you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it over? If you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it over? Because if you don't do it right the first time, you're going to revisit that over and over again. Now, you, I put at the bottom, you don't fail God's tests, you get to take them over. You never fail God's tests, you just get a rewrite. And you know what? It's good to get a rewrite, isn't it? But you know what? God's going to let you do it again. He's not, say, he's not going to write you off, but he will let you do it again. Because you don't fail God's test, you get to do them over. Now, I want to tell you about John Wooden, though, just a little bit. Because he would have the very best athlete, athletes from all over America that would come to be a part of his basketball program. I mean, they would come from everywhere. And these were kids that were already awesome. They were just crazy talented basketball players. And they're going to do their university with, and they all want to be with John Wooden because he's winning championships. And if he's recruiting me, I want to play for him. So the best of the best are coming to his school to play. Now, when he would come, the very first practice, when all the guys would come in, very first practice, he would walk in and he'd say take off your shoes and take off your socks and then he would sit down across from them on a bench and he would say all right take your right sock pull it on he'd say pull it on and pull it up grab the heel pull it all the way up run your foot across hand across the bottom of your foot make sure that that's very very snug he said now run your hand across the front of your toes remove one toe after another, remove any crease that is there, remove every crease on your toes, now pull your hand across the bottom of your foot, and then pull again, tug tightly at the heel of your foot. He would be doing that, and the kids would be going like, dude, like, I've been playing basketball since I was five. I mean, like, I know how to put my shoes on. He'd say, quiet, do as I tell you. Then he'd go to the next foot, and he'd go through the same thing. Then he'd say, now, grab your shoe, open it up, put your foot in. Now start at the bottom. Pull this, pull this, move to the next lace. Pull right, 
pull left, move to the next lace. And then he would get them and he'd say, tie it, wrap it around once, pull it to the front, and put a double knot in your shoe. He'd say, if you do not do these things, one little wrinkle in your sock will cause a blister, which will take you out of practice, which will take you out of the games. He says, if you don't take care of your feet, if you don't take care of your footwear, it's the most important thing that you have. And back then, we didn't have good shoes. You know what I mean? <laughs> we had those Converse All-Stars that are pretty awesome, but uh, Cheryl's not wearing hers today. But I remember, I remember several times playing basketball where, boy, you get a blister. That was like, ouch. You're trying to run up the court and you try to stop. Go, oh. But then he would do that. Once they all got their shoes tied up, it would take about half an hour to do. He would say, very good. That's the end of the first practice. Good night, everybody. He did it with everybody. He even did it on leadership shows. He went through it. He had principles about taking care of your feet. Because foundations are everything. And if you don't get the foundation right, you'll never, ever be excellent.